I never liked Halloween much. It's always been a holiday that makes me feel on edge. The costumes, the masks, the whole anything could be lurking vibe, it just puts me off. But last year was different. It wasn't just unsettling, it was terrifying. I had moved to a quiet neighborhood on the edge of town, the kind of place where everyone knows everyone. Halloween night was supposed to be a fun, innocent evening, with kids running around in costumes and parents sipping hot cocoa on their porches. But when I sat down at my window to hand out candy, something about the atmosphere felt off. The night was darker than usual. Clouds covered the moon, and the streetlights flickered like something was tampering with the electricity. Kids still trick-or-treated, but fewer than expected. Every now and then, I'd see a group of them run past my house, their laughter echoing in the cool night air. Still, something felt wrong. It wasn't the costumes or the shadows. It was the silence that followed once the last few kids had gone home. Around 10 p.m., I was getting ready to turn off the porch light when I saw them. Three kids, or at least they looked like kids, approached my house. Their costumes were different, though. Not the playful, innocent kind you expect on Halloween. They were dressed in plain, old-fashioned clothes, like something out of a different time, with pale faces and blank, emotionless stares. They weren't wearing masks, but their faces almost seemed unreal. They stood at the bottom of my driveway, staring up at my house without moving. I figured maybe they were older kids playing a prank, so I opened the door and called out, Hey, you want some candy? My voice was shaky, but I tried to act normal. No response. They just stood there, staring. Not at me, but through me like I wasn't even there. A cold wind picked up, rustling the leaves on the ground, and that's when I noticed something strange. There were no footsteps leading to where they were standing. The driveway was covered in leaves, and the ground was damp from an earlier rain, but the spot where they stood was undisturbed, like they had just appeared there. I took a step back, my heart pounding in my chest. You guys all right? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. But they didn't move. Suddenly one of them, the one standing in the middle, tilted their head, just slightly, but enough for me to catch a glimpse of their eyes. They were completely black. No whites, no pupils, just black, empty voids. I stumbled back inside and slammed the door shut, locking it out of pure instinct. My mind raced, trying to make sense of what I had just seen. I rushed to the window, opening the curtains just enough to peek out, but they were gone. Not walking down the street, not hiding in the shadows, just gone. At this point, I'm starting to wonder if I was seeing things, but I just knew it couldn't be the case. I sat in silence for what felt like hours, listening to the wind howl outside, my mind replaying the image of those black, empty eyes over and over. Then, just as I was starting to calm down, the doorbell rang. I jumped, my heart pounding in my ears. Slowly, I walked back to the door, peering through the peephole, but there was no one there. I opened the door cautiously, scanning the driveway and the street beyond, empty. But when I looked down, I saw a small, old-fashioned note lying on the doormat. I picked it up, my hands trembling, and unfolded it. Scrawled in messy, uneven handwriting were the words, We're the last ones. You're next. I slammed the door shut, my body shaking with fear. I checked every lock, every window, making sure the house was secure. But I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't safe. That I wasn't alone. I didn't sleep that night. Every sound made me jump. The next morning, I packed a bag and left town. I didn't tell anyone where I was going. I didn't even look back at the house as I drove away. I haven't celebrated Halloween since, and I never will, because I know they'll come again. I don't know when, but I know they're waiting. And this time, I don't think I'll be able to escape.